So students were asking, where is it to the mock test? Like when will they get the details for the mock test? Bagali sir. Hello sir, are you there? Hello. Yeah, Nikesh, I think my network may be the problem. Uh, yeah, sir. Sir, actually, students had queries like uh, when will they have their mock test and what are the details? See, uh, as I said, uh, Nikesh, the mock test details should be shared to the main. They did not worry. The entire schedule and people still have it. Right? Within that, we will share the mock test. Sir, as, and uh, uh, if a student like uh, they have applied for this sir, I'll tell you. Yes, sir. If a student is applying for KCT application uh, for engineering option PCM. Yes. But in admit card, they have given biology also. See how it will be. Like uh, instructor have... of engineering uh -huh. or uh, agriculture, uh -huh. all PCM will come. Okay. It is only the student. The student who wish to go for engineering, PCM he can only PCMP. attempt PCM. Yeah, he right. can only attempt. Only the students who are even having CS, mm -hmm. they will be having option. They need not worry about it. Okay. Okay. Sir. I think we should start. Yeah. So. Welcome back students. So welcome to the second lecture, which is biology, which is taken by Pawan Nag, sir. Uh, yeah, sir. So you can just start presenting your screen, sir. Hello, Pawan, sir. Yeah, Nikesh. Yeah, sir. You can start, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, students. Uh, in my last session, uh, we started with a unit called uh, Ecology, in which we saw two chapters in a previous class. One was uh, Organisms and Population, which dealt about how uh, an abiotic factor influences the survival of an organism and how it forms something called as population and how uh, population growth occurs, what are the models for growth. And we saw about how the population interactions takes place. Uh, after that, we saw about uh, ecosystem, which is uh, in which we saw about what is the role of biotic factors uh, uh, such as producers, consumers, and decomposers. And we saw about the functional units such as uh, productivity, decomposition, energy flow, and nutrient cycle. So uh, we have two more chapters to be dealt from the same unit. One is biodiversity and its conservation. The last chapter for the whole syllabus is environmental issues. So let us start looking into the chapter called biodiversity and conservation. Now, as you know, uh, if you look at the definition of biodiversity, it says uh, all the variations or differences that you find in different level of biological organization is called as biodiversity. Uh, what has been discussed in this chapter from NCRT syllabus is uh, first we are discussed about what are the levels of biodiversity. Uh, under levels of biodiversity, uh, you have studied about three levels. One it is called as genetic diversity, second one is species diversity, and the third one is ecological diversity. Uh, just to remind you that uh, questions may arise uh, from many data facts from this questions, sorry, from this chapter. 
a lot of data uh, as well as examples, which I hope you can give some importance on uh, memorizing all this. Um, Chandana, check, please check your internet connection because screen is visible for me. I have logged in from two other devices. Yeah. So uh, one such example is seen in case of levels of biodiversity. There is one level of biodiversity which is called as genetic diversity. And a gen genetic diversity, I hope you can remember there are 50,000 different varieties of race varieties in India and 1,000 varieties of mango. And there are uh, several genetic variations which is found in case of a uh, medicinal plant called as Raulflia omatoria, which produces a chemical called as respirin. Similarly, with respect to genetic diversity, you have seen diversity of amphibians is more in Western Ghats than that of Eastern Ghats. Ecological diversity is something where you see the differences in the ecosystem of a particular area. That you have seen that uh, examples includes uh, the different types of ecosystems that you find across uh, India. So uh, again, I'm reminding you that please give importance for all this memorizing or the facts such as examples and data, especially from this uh, chapter. Uh, under levels of after levels of biodiversity, I have studied the extent of biodiversity, or you can say. Uh, how many species are there? So how many species are there uh, in world as well as of, uh, across India? So as per IUCN's data of 2014, uh, as you know, the full form of IUCN is International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. According to that data, it is 1.5 million species which have been discovered still now. And uh, uh, according to an Robert May's estimate, there are about 7 million species which are still to be discovered. Out of the organisms which have been discovered right now, majority of them are from uh, animal kingdom. About 70% of them belongs to animal kingdom. And out of that, 70% uh, of them belongs to uh, insect. Uh, so there is a pie chart given in your NCRT syllabus, if you can observe that. In figure 15.1, uh, under invertebrates, the maximum diversity is found in case of insects that is followed by molluscans and then crustaceans. In case of vertebrates, the maximum diversity is found in case of fishes. Then we have birds, followed by that we have got reptiles, mammals and amphibians. In case of plants, the maximum diversity is found in case of fungi as per IUCN's uh, data. Let me remind you that Fungi do not belong to plant kingdom, but as per IUCN's data, they have just included fungi under plants. So as per that, the highest diversity is in case of uh, fungi, angiosperms, and then followed by that, it is algae, mosses, lichens, etc. Uh, if you look at the uh, same data with respect to India, India is having around thousand different uh, species of plants and almost double the species of animals. What is interesting part of India is India uh, has only 2.4% of the world's land area, but uh, what you see the contribution of India towards biodiversity is around 8.1%, which means with a very less amount of land mass, India's contribution for the uh, world's biodiversity it is up to 8.1%. Uh, uh, followed by this, you have studied an important part that is uh, uh, you have studied about patterns of biodiversity. Patterns of biodiversity in which uh, you have studied two patterns. Uh, one is uh, called as latitudinal gradient. One is latitudinal gradient and the other one is called as species area relationship. So species area. So under latitudinal gradient, what you have studied that is the species diversity is maximum in equator. As we move away from equator towards polar region, 
the diversity keeps on decreasing. So if you can uh, imagine this as a globe uh, and the zero degrees, we have uh, something called as equator. If you just have a basic geographic uh, background, you can see most of the tropical evergreen forest lies in this equator. For example, there is Amazon in Brazil, there is Congo forest in Africa, and Philippines, which all falls in the equator or in a tropical region. As we move away from this tropical region, the species richness keeps on decreasing. They have given one interesting example that, that uh, in a country called Colombia, which is very close to equator, it is having uh, 1,400 different species of birds. And India, which partly lies in tropical region and other part in temperate region, it is having a species richness of 1,200 species of birds. New York, which comes under temperate region, uh, it is having uh, around 105 uh, species of birds. Greenland, which comes more towards polar region, it is having just around uh, 56 species of birds. So as we move from equator to the uh, polar region, species richness keeps on decreasing. Uh, in fact, as I said, one of the most richest biodiversity that you find across the world is uh, Amazon, uh, which is the house for about 40,000 different species of plants. As I told you in the beginning, questions may arise from data. I would strongly suggest you people to uh, memorize these data, uh, such as, you know, Amazon is. Uh, House home for uh, 40,000 different species of plants, 3,000 different species of fishes, 1,300 species of birds, 427 species of mammals, 427 species of amphibians, 378 species of reptiles, and it, it houses 1,25,000 different species of vertebrates. Um, sorry, invertebrates. So uh, what is the reason that tropical region, it will be having so much of biodiversity and uh, temperate and tropical, sorry, temperate and polar region is having less biodiversity is they are given three reasons. One is uh, temperate region and polar region has been subjected for glaciation earlier. Uh, like for example, if you have seen this English movie called Ice Age, which is a cartoon movie which is based on those uh, glaciation time, or uh, if you are aware about a big anim uh, big uh, elephant-like uh, animal called as mammoth, mammoth evolved on planet Earth so that it is adapted to uh, adapted to uh, the uh, glaciations, but as as it continued, in the sense as uh, uh, several millions years later, gradually what happened in, is glaciation started uh, or glaciers started melting, which means the animals which were present in the glaciers, uh, which had evolved to adapt in that particular cold environment, they got extinct. But as Tropical uh, forest has not been subjected for glaciation. So if you can understand, in tropical regions, since there is no glaciation, there is a lot of evolutionary time which is meant for uh, speciation. But whatever species have evolved in temperate region and polar region have been subjected for extinction because uh, in, 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 in the old world, glaciation happened uh, more than uh, once. In the sense, it has undergone extinction for more than once. Second region is, uh, if, if you again have a basic uh, geographical knowledge, the tropical region receives direct sunlight for about six months, whereas temperate region uh, receives the direct sunlight only for three months uh, in a year, um, both the temperate region. In the sense, uh, the sunlight, if it is less, it means energy input is less. If energy input is less, so obviously it is going to lead to less productivity. And uh, less productivity means or it may be not favorable for speciation. And the third reason is you might be knowing like 
uh, in countries like india we have got different seasons such as monsoon winter and summer but tropical region do not have any such seasons it it has one single season that is rainy season 12 months in a year it continuously rains there and um, hence there is a constant or there is no seasonal variation and hence it has pro promoted niche specialization and leading to more species diversity uh, that you have seen it in case of latitudinal gradient when it comes to species area relationship uh, you you may remember it was proposed by a german uh, naturalist called alexander ambold uh, what according to him he says is uh, the species richness of a given area keeps on increasing with the increased explored area let's say this is area of exploration and this is species richness on y axis as you increase the area of exploration species richness also keeps on increasing but only up to certain limit after which it is going to become constant there will be no more further increase in the species richness uh, i am repeating with the increase in area of exploration species richness also keeps on increasing but only up to certain limits how to calculate species richness species richness is given by s is equal to c into a raise to z where uh, c is y intercept and z is slope of the line or regression coefficient uh, this gives an rectangular hyperbola which do not get gives a clear correlation between or relationship between x axis and y axis and then this is converted into log log value when you convert it into log log value it is it is it will be calculated with log of s is equal to log of c uh, plus z into log of a uh, if you calculate like this you are going to get a linear curve uh, what is next important thing here is uh, you may have to remember some of the z value that is given in your book uh, i think they are given two z values uh, or rather three z values uh, one z value is for a wide range of taxa where it it falls somewhere around 0.1 to 0.2 for wide range of tax so which means normally the z value it will be somewhere between 0.1 to 0.2 a wide range of tax as this z value uh, z value for uh, rugiverous forest uh, what happens in case of rugiverous forest such as amazon forest is since the species richness is more Uh, this is going to become more steeper and then z value uh, of frugivorous forest of frugivorous forest it will be somewhere ranging between 0.6 to 1.2 if you go for a very wide range of exploration or in other words if you look at uh, like if you start exploring an entire continent so z value for a very large area of exploration then the z value it can go up to 1.15 uh this is what we have studied under patterns of biodiversity after patterns of biodiversity i have seen about the importance of species diversity of ecosystem so what we need to understand here is that uh ecosystem is formed from community i hope you know this biological organization that there are species number of species together forms population different populations forms community community forms ecosystem we live in ecosystem and we live in community and we represents a population uh, so if there is any differences or if there is uh, any collapse of community it means the ecosystem also collapses so what is important is to maintain a stable community now when we call a community as stable is when do you call a place having a stable uh, community is stable community should be having two properties one is it should be having a constant productivity it should be having a constant productivity from year to year and the second thing is 
we should be resistant against uh, we should be resistant against or resistant to or resilient to alien species invasion alien species i hope you know those do not belong to the ecosystem such as acornia parthenium catfish all those are called as alien species and stable community should be having resistant to alien species invasion now wherever biodiversity is more you will see that community it will be stable i'm repeating wherever biodiversity is more you can see that productivity it will be constant and it will be resistant to alien species invasion uh, and it was proven by a long term uh, experiments which were done by david tilman and uh, one more thing that is important here is about uh, an hypothesis proposed by paul irich uh, so he proposes what is called as rivet popper hypothesis he proposes something called as rivet popper hypothesis which is an analogy uh, i hope you can understand what do you mean by analogies analogies like comparison so it compares an flying of aeroplane with functioning of ecosystem flying of aeroplane it compares with that of functioning of ecosystem and aeroplane will be having lot of uh, rivets in it and those rivets like you can if you are confused about the word rivet you can just understand it as nut and bolts uh, rivets can be com he compares with that of species in an ecosystem and uh, he compares passengers passengers who uh, travel in aeroplane he compares to that of the humans so if if he says if passengers who, uh, who travel in aeroplane starts popping out or removing the rivet rivet na kilta ho that then the functioning of aeroplane it is definitely going to affect but it de it depends upon from where the rivet taken out rivet na seat in the kitidara or engine in the kitidara it makes a lot of difference if you take out the rivet from engine immediately the functioning of aeroplane it is going to get affected but if you take the rivet out of some seat or something it may not affect the aeroplane immediately so similarly we human beings are responsible for uh, extinction of species which is going to affect the functioning of ecosystem but it depends upon which species is getting extinct because of humans so in the same context you might have heard about something called as uh, something called as keystone species uh, whose function plays a very important role in case of uh, functioning of the entire ecosystem uh, so since we all travel in this aeroplane and rivets are important or in other words since we all live in the ecosystem and the species are important for functioning of ecosystem it is important that species diversity diversity should be maintained in the ecosystem um uh, i saw somebody raising hands if there are any doubts uh, should i take it or yaro doubt raise madidri any doubts okay fine uh, after this what you have studied is about something called as loss of biodiversity uh, under uh, loss of biodiversity uh, you again there are a lot of data that you should remember that uh, iucn's red data list says that uh, there are 700 Uh, of different organism have got extinct from last 500 years which belong to 338 vertebrates 300 uh, 59 invertebrates 82 plants 
And uh, you may also remember some of the recently extinct organisms, uh, such as Africa, Hylacin from Australia, Stellar Seaford from Africa, and different subspecies of Hylus of Bali, Javan, Caspian, etc. And uh, compared to uh, all other group or all other taxos of organisms, the taxon which is getting extinct or threatened highest is of uh, amphibians. And you have studied that what Earth is undergoing now is the sixth mass extinction. This mass extinction is also called as anthropological mass extinction because the person who is responsible for this is humans. And then you have studied what are the causes for this loss of biodiversity. One, as you know, it is uh, habitat loss and fragmentation. Habitat loss and uh, fragmentation. Uh, second reason for loss of biodiversity is over exploitation. Uh, under over exploitation, you have seen the examples of uh, Stella Sea Cove. As well as, as well as passengers pigeon, which got extinct. Uh, third, you have seen about uh, alien species uh, invasions. Please remember the examples such as Nile perch, which was introduced into Lake Victoria. Uh, similarly, Parthenium, Lantana, Water Ions, and uh, African catfish. And the last one is uh, you have studied about co-extinction, where if there are two organisms, extinction of one organism will be responsible for, uh, will lead to extinction of the other one. And at last, you have studied about biodiversity conservation, wherein you have seen uh, narrow utilitarian values, broad utilitarian values, ethical values, and aesthetical values for conserving it. And then you have seen about in situ conservation and ex situ conservation, which are the different methods of conservation. Where in situ conservation is you conserve it in the place itself, in its uh, local place itself, such as sanctuaries, wildlife sanctuaries, uh, national park, biosphere reserves, sacred groves. In case of ex situ conservation, conservation happens out of its original habitat. Uh, so, before I start with multiple choice questions, I'll just take one or two minutes of time and uh, please let me know if you have any doubts to be clarified before we start solving questions. I can see uh, some of you have raised your hand, but uh, neither it is. See, either you can send me the questions through chat box if you have any doubts, 
I'll just wait for one more last one minute and then. Uh, sir, there is one student who raised the hand, Ganesh. Yeah, so uh, I'm not getting what, what is the doubt from him. Fine, I will wait for this. And meanwhile, I'll just start the questions. And if you have any doubt, please let me know during the session itself. So the first question here is... Sir, student can put in chat box. Sir. Yeah, yeah, question. that's what. I'll just look into that. Otherwise, the first question here is... Uh, Medicinal plant Raulfilia omatoria growing in Himalayan regions shows variation in terms of potency and concentration of a chemical called as respine uh, that, is, that it produces. It's an example for what? Uh, I can see many of you responding as answer as C. Very good. The answer should be C. Uh, please remember other examples also in the same context that uh, with respect to genetic diversity, other couple of examples which is given is there are about 50,000 different various varieties of uh, rice, varieties of rice, not this 50,000 different species of rice. Rice belongs to a single species called as Oriza sativa, but there are 50,000 different varieties. But what is the concern about this is, though we are having 50,000 different varieties of rice, uh, we have uh, very less available rice in our market, which indicates that people are not growing other varieties of rice because the hybrid plants were introduced. Now, I introduction of hybrid plant is said to be one of the reasons for genetic erosion, that farmers keep on choosing only the hybrid plants and neglect the genetic diversity. One more example that you can remember is uh, with respect again uh, species richness is from the mango varieties. As I told you in the beginning, uh, if rice has 50,000 varieties, uh, there are 1,000 different varieties of mango. Uh, so with respect to species diversity, just remember one example that is Western Ghats have greater amphibian species diversity than that of Eastern Ghats. Under ecological diversity, uh, India as in geographical area, it has got a lot of diversity such as we have uh, Himalayan ecosystem is different. Rajasthan have a desert ecosystem. Coastal area have a marine ecosystem. There are lake ecosystem. There is uh, evergreen forest ecosystem in Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. That is what we mean by ecological diversity. Good. Next question. Biodiversity is affected by latitudinal gradients and species area relationship. Species area relationship and longitudinal gradients. Both A and B, latitudinal as well as longitudinal gradients. Can I expect any quick answers? Uh, A as well as C. Okay, let's see. Uh, see, we do not have anything called as latitudinal gradient. Uh, as you know, what do you mean by latitude and longitude is? This is called as latitude. Sorry. If this is Earth or globe, this is called as latitude. There is latitudinal gradient. There is latitudinal gradient, but we do not have longitudinal gradient. Because longitudes are the axis or the imaginary lines which moves from one pole to another polar region where you do not find the differences in biodiversity or there is no specific gradient between different latitudes. So there is no longitudinal gradients, but you can see latitudinal gradients as well as you can see what is called as species richness, sorry, species area relationship, wherein we saw it was proposed by Alexander Ambold and uh, 
species richness keeps on increasing with the increase in the area of exploration, but only up to certain limits. This is true. Option A is true. B, species area relationship and longitudinal gradient. As I told you, we do not have longitudinal gradient, but you can see only the latitudinal gradient. So B will be wrong. So obviously C will be wrong. And D also have longitudinal gradients, so it will be wrong. So the correct answer should be A. Next question. Log A is 4. The value of log A is 4. And Z is 0 0.3. Log of C value is 0 0.8. Find the log of S. So as we know, log S is equal to uh, log of C plus Z into log of A. So log of C is given as uh, 0 0.8 plus log of Z is 0 0.3. Log of A is 4. So which means 0 0.8 plus so 1.2 log of s is equal to log of c plus z into log of a log of a is 4 what will be the value then so 0.8 plus 1.4, it will come to 2. So the correct answer should be D. So please remember this formula. Uh, by the way, by doing this, will you get a rectangular hyperbola or will you get a linear curve? Can I get a quick answer? Will it be a rectangular hyperbola from this or will it be a linear curve when you convert it into log log value? Very good. It will be linear. For uh, re rectangular hyperbola, the formula will be S is equal to C into A raised to Z. Fine. Next question. The value of Z lies in the range of dash regardless of the taxonomic group, which means what is the normal value of Z? Normal value of Z, it will be 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. This should be 0 0.2. So the answer for this, it should be D. Also remember the Z value of uh, some in some other cases also. For example, what is the Z value of um, you know, frugivorous forest is? Can I get a quick reply? What is the Z value of frugivorous forest? Frugivorous forest means the forest where fruit eating animals are more. How do the Z value is still written? Good. So frugivorous forest to Z value, it will be somewhere between 0 0.6 to 0 0.6 to 1.2. If an area of exploration is very large, as in case of uh, 1.15, uh, it is not 1.15. Z value for a very large area of exploration, such as continent, it will be 1.15. So anyway, the answer for this question should be B, that is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Which of the following hypothesis suggests that ecosystems are like aeroplane, 
where the fly that is compared to that of ecosystem functioning may or may not be compromised depending upon which species is being lost. So if it is any normal species, ecosystem and functioning may not damage immediately. But if the species which has got getting extinct, such as keystone species, which plays an important role in the functioning of ecosystem gets extinct, then the whole ecosystem is going to get affected. This was given by, what should be the answer for this? Answer should be option D, that is rivet popper hypothesis. Please remember rivet popper hypothesis was given by uh, and professor from Stanford University, uh, who is called as Paul Eldridge. Repeating, it was given by Paul Eldridge, which is an analogy. Next one. Many species like Stella's sea cow and passenger's pigeon have been driven to brink of extinction. Which of the following describes this situation? Both of them are the examples of over exploitation. Uh, passengers' pigeons, you know, just like the pigeon that we find around us, uh, it was in European countries and this was hunted down for its flesh or for eating. Uh, Stella sea cow, uh, if you can recall from the chapter called Organisms and Population, you may remember there is certain types of adaptation in case of organisms to survive in a particular environment. Stella sea cow has got extinct from Russia. And if you can understand, Russia is quite a cold country. So to withstand that cold Stella sea cow, it will be having something called as blubber. So these blubbers which are present in the Stella sea cow, will provide them an insulator against cold condition and thereby it will survive better in cold. But this blubber has a lot of economic importance for humans and then stellar sea cow was hunted down for the purpose of getting blubber. And right now we do not have any stellar sea cow. It is an example for over exploitation. So the answer should be A. With respect to habitat loss, uh, please remember uh, the examples which have been cited in your NCRT book. NCRT book nali kelo habitat loss ige example kotti along with data. Please remember that one do the way in which the Amazon forest is getting extinct. You know, Amazon forest is called as uh, lungs of the Amazon forest is the principal producer of carbon dioxide and labo oxygen convert capacity Amazon forest. It is called as lungs of the planet. But today, you know, you can see that almost 1000 hectares of this rainforest it will be lost for a very short span of time. That is by the time you complete reading this chapter. Uh, so, in the example, in Kotirodu, once earth was covered by 14% of the earth was covered by tropical rainforest, which is a pristine forest. Adhanalak percent in the rainforest is now reduced only to 6%. More than half of the tropical evergreen forest has been reduced. And they are given what is it? Two main reasons for uh, loss of biodiversity or loss of habitat in Amazon is the Lanyapka at Pometro. One do Amazon forest has been converted into grass so that it can be used for uh, rearing cow. Asu Sakra Koskara, especially beef cattle, Sakra Koskara, they are converting pristine evergreen forest into grass. Innundu for the purpose of soya bean cultivation. For the purpose of soya bean cultivation, Amazon forest has been cut down. Um, but however, the answer for this question should be A. 
Initially, dash biodiversity hotspots were identified. Again, data important. Adukinta modulu. Let us look into what is this hotspots are. Let us try to understand about what you mean by hotspots. See, when you are conserving biodiversity, uh, it has been realized that uh, governments do not give much importance for the conservation of biodiversity. I am repeating, governments do not give much importance for the conservation of biodiversity. And then uh, ecologists or conservationists who, who work towards uh, conservation of biodiversity, uh, they have decided to identify some hotspots. Uh, wherein if you, it will be a priority area. So if you can conserve hotspot, you can conserve mini biodiversity. Now, when do you call something as hotspot? Is it should be fulfilling three criteria to call something as hotspots. One is uh, it should be having very high endemism. What do you mean by endemism is? Uh, Organisms or species should be found only in that particular area. matra organisms will come endemism there is an animal called as nilgai which is found in case of uh, nilgiris, or it may be like uh, malbar hornbill which is found only in the western Ghats. Ithara, if it is found in only particular regions across the world, then we call it as endemic species. So if you want to call in particular areas uh, hotspot, it should be having high endemism. I hope you can understand the logic here. Uh, there is no point in conserving crow. Kage kapat there is no meaning because crows are found throughout the world. But it makes more meaning to conserve uh, and hornbill or black buck because they are found in only particular regions across the world. Second criteria to call something as an, uh, a region as an hotspot is an hotspot should be having some or the other kind of threat. In the sense, let's say there is a forest which is having some endemic species and there is no threat for that endemic species. So then there is no need for, uh, you know, spending much of effort to conserve those, uh, conserve those species because anyway, there is no threat. So you can call it as an hotspot if it is having an high endemism and if it is threatened, that area is threatened or if there is something like deforestation, pouching, you don't have to conserve it. And it should be having high species richness. So, Yaudadu Jagdali, E. Moor criteria Galidre, Adana, hotspot and the character. There are, there were around, not around, there were 25 biodiversity hotspots which were initially listed down. Adake, Inna Ombat, what was a hotspots Gana had Madi, they have added three, nine more hotspots and the total number of hotspots throughout the world. Throughout the world, it is 34. Out of that, three of them are present in, in India. I'm sure all of you know which are those three. One is Western Ghats and Sri Lanka. Second one is Indo-Burman uh, forest. And the last one is Himalaya. What is interesting is uh, it, the 34 art spots which are what has been identified across the world, across the earth. It represents only 2% of the Earth's land area. But by conserving that only 2% of Earth's um, land area, it is possible to reduce the mass extinction by 30%. I am repeating, hotspot represents only 2% of area. And if you can conserve that 2% of area with I, uh, just the importance for the part of that, 30% of ongoing mass extinctions it will be reduced. Now, I hope you can answer this. Can I, can I get a quick answers now?
So initially, what were the number of biodiversity that was identified were 25. Initially identified by 25. They were identified, but subsequently nine more have been added to the list, bringing the total number of biodiversity hotspots in the world is 34. These hotspots are the regions of accelerated habitat loss, which means it is threatened. Plus, it should be having high endemism. Three of these hotspots, Western Ghats and Sri Lanka, Indo-Burman, and Himalaya cover our country's exceptionally high biodiversity region. Although all biodiversity hotspots put together covers less than 2%, less than 2% of the Earth's landmass, the number of species they collectively harbor is extremely high and strict protection of these hotspots could reduce the ongoing mass extinction by 30%. So the answer should be B. Next question. Uh, dodo bird was a flightless bird which was inhabitant of Mauritius. Uh, you know, Mauritius was originally uh, uninhabited. And originally, only Manushridlila, Mauritius. Nali. But when Portuguese uh, landed in the Mauritius for the first time, they started hunting dodo bird. Within the span of few decades, the Mauritius was cleared out of dodo bird. We saw respirinacin uh, drug which is produced from various kinds of uh, raul filia or raul, raul filia uh, mometoria which is found in Himalaya. Nile perch in Lake Victoria is an example of uh, alien species. Uh, so it will match with four. Main cause for biodiversity losses, habitat loss and fragmentation. So is with two, is one, is with two, B is with one, C is with four, and B is with three. So the answer should be B. So next question. X U two strategies includes ex to means conservation of species out of its original habitat. I'm repeating out of its original habitat. So zoo is an example for ex to conservation. Seed and pollen banks are the examples of ex to conservation. Gene bank and tissue culture can be considered as ex to conservation as well as botanical garden. So other than this, one more important ex situ conservation that you may have to understand is cryo uh, preservation, where cryo preservation is a method of conservation of uh, biological samples, especially the gametes. And they use uh, liquid nitrogen for conserving it. And the boiling point of liquid nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. So in extreme low temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius, biological samples are preserved. This is what we mean by cryopreservation. However, the answer for this question can will be uh, option D. I can see somebody have answered B. Uh, fourth one. Botanical garden is also an example for ex situ conservation. What are the examples for uh, in situ conservation? Is what are the examples of in situ conservation? In situ conservation again, data important. Agarodrina, I'm just going to list down all those data as well as uh, the methods of conservation. Uh, one of the important in situ conservation method is uh, biosphere reserves. And uh, India has 14 such biosphere reserves. Then there is National Park. India has 90 national parks. Then there is uh, 
wildlife sanctuaries and india has 440 wildlife sanctuaries one more example is uh, sacred grove there are many sacred groves examples is uh, is found in kashi and a al jentia hills of meghalaya as well as uh, aravalli hills of rajasthan and there are many regions across western ghats of karnataka maharashtra uh, subka chanda bastar in of madhya pradesh meghalaya uh, even in many of the other northeastern states you can see the presence of sacred grass next one which of the following is considered as hot spot of biodiversity in india we have seen it is western ghats and uh, Sri Lanka is one hot spot together. Which of the following is the reason for greatest biological diversity of tropical region? Uh, while I was talking about synopsis, we saw what are the reasons that latitudinal. Uh, what is the reason for latitudinal gradient? In Kuskara, tropical region only highest biodiversity is there. That is North Island. tropical latitude has remained undisturbed for millions of years because tropical region only in nerdilla ant helidre what has not happened in the tropical region is uh, it has not been subjected for glaciations in tropical region there were no glaciations or it is not affected by glaciation tropical environment are less seasonal relatively more constant and predictable this is also correct this is also correct more solar energy is available in tropic results in high productivity because for 6 months solar energy or sunlight lies right above the tropical region this is also correct so the answer should be d characters of an stable community are we saw this with respect to Um, why should we conserve species or biodiversity na yenu kaapadkobeku annodu nodvaga nodidvi it should not show too much variation from year to year productivity or in other words productivity should be stable second it must be resistant to occasional natural or man made disturbance this is also correct ಅಂದ್ರೆ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಗಬಾರ್ದು ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಏಲಿಯನ್ ಸ್ಪೀಸೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಅಂಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇಯರ್ ಟು ಇಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಅಕೇಶನಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಆರ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ರೆಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಏಲಿಯನ್ ಸ್ಪೀಸೀಸ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ next question which option correctly describes uh, our equations or for curve a and b in the given graph of species area relationship uh, what is a is rectangular hyperbola which we get from the formula s is equal to a into z to the power of a to sorry s is equal to c into a to the power of z as b is uh, the linear curve which we get from converting it into log log value yeah as many of you have answered very good the answer should be option a uh please quickly answer this last question and then we will take a break for 5 minutes and then continue after that uh which of which of the following statements regarding biodiversity hotspots are incorrect it should be having i endemism it should be having i level of species richness 
the total number of biodiversity that you see on planet earth is 34 initially it was 25 plus 9 were added 34 uh, three of them occurs in india whereas here they have given it as five so this is wrong alien species i alien species invasion uh, alien species invasion irodrinda threatened agutte let's see the options and then decide whether which one is the correct one uh, cover less than 2% of earth's land area but if properly conserved it can reduce the extinction by 30% so one is correct sorry question rodu about incorrect definitely fifth one is incorrect just one minute yeah so uh, i alien species invasion uh, fourth one is incorrect so answer should be either b or c not c or it can be d but first one is definitely correct so it cannot be b and d answer should be c that is fourth fifth that is alien species invasion nirodrinda uh, endemic species sorry hotspot anta kariyak baralla cover less than 2% of the earth's land area but if properly conserved it can reduce the extinction by 30% this is correct statement actually this is supposed to be correct statement Question is about which of them are incorrect. High level of species richness, endemism. Yeah, answer should be C. But uh, uh, fifth, sixth statement covers less than two percent of the Earth's land area. But if properly conserved, uh, we can reduce the rate of extinction to half. Yeah, the answer should be only fourth and fifth. So it will be the option. So the answer should be C. Fine. Uh, as I told, just take a break for five minutes and then start the class in after five minutes. Meanwhile, if you have any break, sorry, if you have any doubts, please uh, post it on the Q and A chat box.
Sir, are you there? Hello, Owen, sir. Anikesh, I think still on break. Hello. Hello, Anikesh. Yes, sir. Owen, sir, yes, sir. still must be on break. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Said just two minutes break. Okay. I think still must be on break. Yeah, so uh, shall we continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, the first Earth Summit for Convention on Biological Diversity, which is very famously called as CBD. It was a convention that was uh, held with a purpose of conserving the uh, biodiversity across the nations where the leaders of different countries came together to take a pledge to prevent their loss of biodiversity. The first such biodiversity was, sorry, Convention on Biodiversity was held in 1992 and it was held in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, the reason for using Rio de Janeiro is that Rio de Janeiro is the capital of Brazil, and Brazil is housed for uh, Amazon forest. Uh, exactly 10 years after that, uh, there was one more summit which was held, and that summit was called as World Summit on uh, was called as World Summit on sustainable development sustainable development and uh, this was held in uh, Johannesburg first one was held in Rio de Janeiro 1992 second was held in Johannesburg 10 years after that in capital of South Africa Anthropological extinction means, uh, as I told you, anthropology is the study of humans. And uh, right now, the extinction that is happening is about two. Okay. Uh, Purnima, I'll just show the previous slide. Just give me a minute. Uh, right now, the mass extinction that is happening is about 100 to 1000 times faster than the earlier five mass extinction and earlier five mass extinctions were because of natural causes like uh, one was because of asteroid strike uh, two or three of them was because of uh, glaciation uh, and the uh, other one was because of climate change but right now what is happening is because of the human activity word or prefix anthro you can understand is as humans. So the answer should be fourth one. Yeah. Um, student by the name Purnima RB. I hope you were asking for this slide. Is this is what you are asking for? Please neglect the C and D. It has got nothing to do with this. First one was held in Rio de Janeiro, which was called as Earth Summit, that's all, or also called as Convention on Biodiversity. What was held in Johannesburg 2002 was called as World Summit on Sustainable Development, that was second one. Okay, you want previous one, this one. Please let me know if you have any doubt from this or please let me know if you have finished this. Is, are you done? Okay, shall we proceed? So let us take up this last question from this chapter and start the next chapter that is the last chapter called uh, environmental issue in which of the following both pairs have correct combination uh, in situ conservation it includes national park 
ex situ conservation in his botanical garden so the answer should be this one in second option in situ conservation is cryo preservation yes it is correct that is conservation of biological sample in extreme low temperature it is quite an advanced method of uh not in situ conservation but it is an example for ex situ conservation so this cannot be correct answer ex situ conservation wildlife sanctuary is correct but this part is not correct in this third question in situ conservation seed bank is not correct seed bank is an example for ex situ conservation wherein because of genetic erosion people try to conserve the seeds preserve the seeds ex situ conservation national park is uh, again not correct national park is an example for in situ conservation in situ conservation tissue culture not correct tissue culture is example for ex situ conservation ex situ conservation sacred grove not correct it should be in situ conservation so the answer for this question should be first one that is in situ conservation is national park and ex situ conservation is botanical garden or zoological park so let us uh, go to next chapter that is uh, environmental issues as i am repeatedly telling uh, meanwhile if you have any doubt out of what we have discussed as of now please feel free to let me know uh next one is environmental issue and what have you studied in this environmental issues is like first you have studied about air pollution uh under air pollution yeah, there is not much discussion on what do you mean by air pollution what are the causes for air pollution in the learning why school in the north come and irthira but how do we prevent air pollution and other bugge you have studied about following things wherein uh, we are going to use something called as electrostatic precipitator which is meant for reducing the uh, suspended particles which are mainly released from uh, coal or uh, thermal uh, power industries in the release of uh, suspended particles na kadme madlikke we are going to use electrostatic precipitator then you have uh, seen about scrubber uh, which is mainly used uh, in industries to reduce the pollution with respect to sulfur oxides in a pollution anna kadme madlikke then you have studied about uh, catalytic converter which contains uh, chemicals such as platinum palladium and rhodium which is going to reduce the pollution in case of uh, pollution in case of automobile uh, vehicles um, and the same air pollution only you have also studied about noise pollution wherein uh, according to air prevention and control of pollution act of 1981 which was amended in 1987 noise pollution has been included under air pollution and uh, you have studied that uh, prolonged exposure to this long uh, prolonged exposure to noise pollution it can lead to various kinds of uh, affects such as uh, sleeplessness increased heart beat altered beating pattern these are the stress which can be induced because of uh, noise pollution and you have studied about lastly uh, a case study of case study of delhi's air pollution in which they used uh, compressed natural gas to reduce the pollution after air pollution you have studied about water pollution under water pollution mainly the discussion is on uh, domestic waste water or domestic uh, sewage which is going to increase the pod of water and under the chapter called microbes in human welfare you have studied how the bod can be uh, reduced that is by using microorganism by water treatment you can reduce the bod and um, you also st studied about uh, algal bloom under this chapter wherein due to eutrophication or 
increasing the nutrients of uh, the water suddenly the algae will grow and thereby reduces the sunlight penetration into water and it also responsible for some foul smell in the water bodies and under the same thing you also studied about bio magnification where it is increase in the concentration of non biodegradable pollutants in food chain because they keep on accumulating from one trophic level to another trophic level uh, with algal bloom you have also studied about what is called as cultural or accelerated uh, eutrophication wherein eutrophication basically it means death of the uh, lake or water bodies due to uh, high nutrient content in them uh, and at the same thing you have studied about case study of the people of uh, arcata which is in the state of california like how they reduce the water pollution in their community next year solid studied about solid waste and under solid waste you have studied about municipal solid waste uh, what do they do is uh, it can be generally it is burnt which is not good but it should be subjected for sanitary landfilling and uh, what are the ways by which we can reduce the solid waste is by using uh, three rs that is reduce refuse reuse recycle all those are the ways by which we can reduce the generation of solid waste itself and under this also you have studied about an case of uh, an person called as ahmed khan from bangalore was able to make uh, poly blend uh, which is a product from waste plastic and uh, then you have studied about agrochemical waste and our agrochemical waste effects you can see that extensive use of fertilizers it will lead to eutrophication uh, or extensive use of pesticides it can lead to uh, bio magnification of those chemicals you have studied about radioactive waste uh, the most dangerous in terms of affecting human health because it can cause mutations and then radioactive waste has to be carefully disposed uh, usually packed in a uh, container and it are deposited around 500 meters deep inside the earth surface so that it won't leak back then you are studied about greenhouse effect uh, wherein because of uh, increase in the greenhouse gases the mean temperature of the earth is increasing uh, and greenhouse effect means it's an it's actually an uh, positive or good effect because it is going to keep the earth's surface warm but due to human activities the greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide methane oxides of uh, nitrous or cfcs they are increasing and thereby the mean temperature of the earth is gradually increasing Uh, it has already increased by 0.6 percent, and if it keeps increasing like this, it will lead to melting of polar caps. It leads to climate change. Uh, at last, we are studying about depletion of ozone layer, which I'm sure you people understand that ozone layer, which is O3, is going to act as a filter in uh, stratosphere, which is going to filter the entry of UV radiations. um uh, and thereby uh, reduction of uv can reduce the cancer causing effects on the skin cancer especially the thickness of ozone is measured in absence unit and the main reason for depletion in ozone is because of uh, chemicals which are called as chlorofluorocarbons which are released into atmosphere Uh, this is mainly what you have studied in this chapter so let us start looking into questions according to new norms uh norms quantity of sulfur in petrol and diesel should not exceed the amount of euro 2 norms or euro 2 standard 
you have studied under air pollution and it is one of the method or one of the criteria which comes under what is called as mass emission standards. So, according to which if they specify certain standards for any vehicles, the manufacturers are not supposed to, supposed to uh, sell those engines which is going to cross the limit of their uh, standards. So, according to Euro 2 norms, uh, you know, if you see Euro 3 norms, the sulfur should be controlled at 330 milli parts per million. Uh, 330 parts per million in case of diesel and 150 parts per uh, million in case of petrol. So the answer should be second one. Uh, yeah, by the way, this is not Euro 2, but it is supposed to be Euro 3 knots. This is not Euro 2, it is Euro 3 knots. Uh, this is a schematic representation of what is called as uh, electrostatic precipitator. You know, electrostatic precipitator is an uh, instrument which is used to reduce the which is used to reduce the emission of particulate matters. What do you mean by particulate matters? Is any suspended particles whose size is less than 2.5 micrometer, less than 2.5 micrometer, and 2.5 micrometer kinta kadme idre, avagadana suspended particulate matters, particulate matters in the world. Particulate matters are dangerous for humans because our respiratory system cannot purify it. And then body nali trachea, bronchia, the liro, cilia galadana purify mada kagala. It will directly enter into our uh, alveoli and thereby interferes with the interferes with the exchange of gases. So this is an example for electrostatic precipitator and it works on the principle of electric charging. Uh, what you find in A is corona, which is an highly charged electrode, which will be emitting negative charges, which will be emitting negative charges and that negative charges, it will be imported on the dirty air. So that dirty air will become negatively charged. So we'll make a small, uh, change it. A is corona. This is going to become negatively charged. Whereas the collection plate which are grounded, it will be positively charged. And thereby it is going to start precipitating on this positively charged one. So the answer should be fourth one. How many statements are correct? Automobiles are the major cause for atmospheric pollution in metro cities. It is correct statement. Water which contains 0.1% of impurities is harmful for drinking. It is correct statement. As organic matter increases, BOD of the water increases, but here they have given it as decrease. It should be increases. As you know, BOD, which stands for biological oxygen demand, it is the amount of oxygen that is required for completely degrading the organic matter by the decomposers present in the water. Suppose if there is an uh, there is group of house and they release the sewage water. Sewage water contains organic waste because what is coming from the residential area, it contains the human waste. It can be from kitchen or it can be human excreta. It contains organic material. That organic material which will join the water bodies has to undergo decomposition. And if you can recall, decomposition has a step called as catabolism. And catabolism uses oxygen. 
So whatever the amount of oxygen is required to completely degrading this organic matter, it is called as biological or biochemical oxygen demand. So as you increase the input of organic material, BOD of the water, that is biochemical oxygen demand, it increases, but here they have given it as decreases. This is not correct. High concentration of DDT affects the calcium metabolism in bird. So this we are studied in the context of biomagnification, wherein you have seen that concentration of non-biodegradable chemicals keeps on increasing as we move from lower trophic level to higher trophic level. For example, uh, if there is an, let's say, certain concentration of uh, pesticides, certain concentration of pesticides in water, that pesticide in terms of food chain, first it enters into uh, phytoplanktons because phytoplanktons are considered as primary producers. From phytoplanktons, it will enter into some small insects. From insects, it will enter into uh, rather than small insect, I hope you know these are called as zooplanktons. From zooplanktons, it will enter into small fishes. Some small fish, it will enter into large fish. From large fish, it enters into animals such as uh, eagle uh, or even humans. So if a farmer in the nearby field has sprayed fight, you know, pesticides, and if, if, if his pesticide is around 0 0.06 or something, parts per billion, in the next level, it, will be, it may become 0 0.12. Uh, in the next one, it may become 0 0.8. In the next one, it may become around four. By the time it e comes to eagle, it may become around 20 or 30 parts per billion. Parts per million. Now, this much concentration of pesticides, it may not kill eagle. I'm repeating, it is not going to kill eagle. But still, the population of eagle, it is going to reduce because uh, these pesticides are going to interfere with the calcium metabolism. And calcium is important for, you know, Eggs shell. It is made up of calcium carbonate. So, if you interfere with the calcium metabolism, egg is going to become soft and thereby it may not hatch. Other the population of eagle is going to reduce. So, A, B, and D are correct. So, the answer should be fourth one. Next one, eutrophication is natural aging of lake by nutrient enrichment of its water. It's correct. Wherein due to enrichment of this nutrients, there will be algal bloom and slowly the organisms inside that it is going to start dying and they start depositing on the floor of the lake and slowly after a couple of hundreds of years, it may start disappearing also. This is correct statement. After carbon dioxide, methane is the major cause of greenhouse gases. If you can recall your NCRT textbook about uh, water pollution, sorry, air pollution, or rather greenhouse gases which are emitted, greenhouse gases are the ability to make the Earth's atmosphere warm because they have the ability to trap it. So carbon dioxide contributes for 60% of greenhouse effect uh, or global warming rather. Methane contributes for 20%. Apart from that, CFCs, that is chlorofluorocarbons contributes for 14%. 
nitrous oxide contributes for 6%. So to be uh, you know, specific, in the descending order, it is carbon dioxide, methane, CFC, and N2O. So this is also correct statement. Ozone is secondary pollutant in trophosphere. As you know, ozone is a gas which is going to filter the UV rays. And ozone, if it is present in the lower atmosphere, I'm repeating ozone, if it is present in the lower atmosphere, it is going to act as pollutant. It, in a sense, it is very harmful. It is going to damage the tissues of plants and animals. I'm repeating ozone is not Good if it is present in the lower atmosphere such as troposphere, but it is very good if it is present in stratosphere. That stratosphere alidre only lower atmosphere and the trophospheric bandre now other inhale madre nama tissues gadwatwa lungs gadu damage. So ozone is secondary pollutant in trophosphere is also correct statement. Thickness of ozone is measured in Dapson's unit. This is also correct. It is given by D, Dapson's unit. So the answer should be third one. That is A, B, C, and D. All of them are correct. Next one. What will happen when carbon dioxide is totally absent in Earth? See, carbon dioxide, just now we saw that it is an example for greenhouse gas. What greenhouse gas does is it is going to absorb the infrared radiation which comes into Earth's atmosphere through sun. It is going to hold it and emit slowly so that the Earth's atmosphere is going to be kept warm. Suppose the greenhouse gases were really land in there. In case the greenhouse gases were not present, the temperature of the Earth would have been 18 degrees Celsius less than zero. Minus 18 degrees Celsius irtitu yavaga greenhouse gases illa andite, which means greenhouse gases are very good for us. I'm repeating greenhouse gases are good for us in the sense for the living organism because it is going to keep the earth's atmosphere warm. But andre greenhouse gases erodrin the earth's temperature is than it is because of it is because of greenhouse gases in the absence of greenhouse gases in the absence of greenhouse gases earth's atmosphere would have been minus 18 degrees celsius so i hope you can get the answer for this what will happen when total carbon dioxide is totally absent on earth maybe all plants will die Temperature of the earth's surface will definitely decrease. Temperature of the earth's surface will not increase. Growth of plant will be induced. Uh, plant diagli sadhyaila ag baudu yakyan telere carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis. But in the context of this chapter, the correct answer for this question should be second one that is temperature of the earth is going to decrease. Hamad Khan used polyblend with vitamin to form. Uh, Hamad Khan is a rack picker and uh, they are going to collect this plastic waste and uh, he along with the academic support from academic support from RV College in Bangalore, they created something called as polyblend, which was used for constructing road. So that presence of plastic in environment will reduce, as well as the longevity of roads also it is going to increase. So the answer for this one, it should be second one. I think this week completed. Yeah. Next question. Can you give me the answer for this? What is the answer for this question? According to CPCB, that is Central Pollution Control Board, 
which particulate size in diameter in micrometer of the air pollutants is responsible for greatest harm to human health in fact new pollution report nodidre pollution report nalli one parameter en kottirtara ant helidre suspended particulate matter esti ide a city nalli suspended particulate matter esti ide annodanna pollution report nalli kottirtara news paper nalli ella athwa you can see it in case of uh, weather reports so suspended particulate matter anta karibek anta helidre the diameter it should be either 2.5 or less than 2.5 micrometer as i told you earlier what is the problem with these pollutants are suppose if there is a trachea like this you know trachea branches to something called as bronchia bronchioles and all you will already you will find presence of mucus as well as you will find ciliated columellar epithelial cells which are meant for purifying the air which is entering but suspended particulate matter will sign tumba kadme irodrinda since the size of suspended particulate matter is too less it can easily escape all this and finally enter into alveoli and the suspended particulate matter in it lo adu idelladannu it can escape all this and it can come and start accumulating inside the alveoli as you know alveoli is the place which is responsible for exchange of gases exchange of gases sig bekagirodrinda idru olagade ella bandu kutkolutte and thereby it is going to affect the exchange of gases so the answer should be 2.5 or less that is third one then a solpa yochane maadi think and give me the answer i will wait for one or two minutes yochane maadi idakke uttara kodi observe the graph carefully very on x axis you can see the presence of uh, dissolved oxygen and y axis it shows the distance down the stream i can see only one uh, not even one fine which graph shows the effect of pollution by sewage on the amount of oxygen dissolved in river uh, you know when you say sewage enters the river sewage contains domestic waste and domestic waste will be rich in organic material if there is any organic material in water to decompose that organic material what is required is the process of anabolism and anabolism requires the use of oxygen oxygen is used for decomposition in other words as the organic matter increases or organic material increases in the water body the biochemical oxygen demand of that it is going to keep on increasing in the first one when sewage enters into the river the dissolved oxygen has increased since oxygen is consumed to decompose the organic material and repeating oxygen is consumed for decomposition of organic material the concentration of dissolved oxygen is not going to increase so option 1 cannot be correct answer 
second one as the sewage water enters the dissolved oxygen should decrease dissolved oxygen kadme uh, decomposition illi enu agila so this is not correct uh, next one is d sewage water il release aagi solpa utti nantara dissolved oxygen kadme agide enu kadme agide anta helidre why it, there is reduction in the amount of uh, dissolved oxygen is because it is consumed for decomposition so the answer should be third one fourth one sewage enters sewage entry aagthakshana jaasti aago avashyakate irodilla it will always decrease but it is not going to increase so the answer should be third one i can see username by geeta g radhpur giving the answer as g uh it cannot be g because the dissolved oxygen will not increase as the sewage enters it will definitely going to decrease i hope it is clear answer should be either a b c or it should be third one but not d next question pollutants from human activities like industries and homes can be radically accelerated accelerate the age of aging of lake which is is known as as you know biomagnification is increase in the biomagnification is increase in the non biodegradable pollutants such as pesticides as we go high in the trophic level food chain and the trophic level mel hogta hogta biomagnification anta helidre uh organic waste jaasti aagta hoga i hope you have heard or read the news somewhere that few years back even mother's milk which is considered to be the purest form of the food for child tai ede allu there was some 0.003% of ddt that was found in even in the mother's milk that is also because of the biomagnification because humans comes in higher trophic level whereas the natural death of the lake because of human activity it is called as eutrophication the answer should be second one you know sedimentation is just a physical process where the things which are having a higher density they are going to settle down lake fertilization is irrelevant so the answer should be second one next one which of the following removes particulate matter using principle of electrostatic electric charge you know it is by electrostatic precipitator answer should be two catalytic converter gal en madutte ant helidre vehicles this catalytic converter it will be made up of some metals like such as platinum palladium uh what they do is they are going to convert unburnt unburnt hydrocarbons which are present in uh vehicle exhaust it will be converted into carbon dioxide and water similarly carbon monoxide it will be converted into carbon dioxide yes carbon dioxide is is polluted but it is less polluted than carbon monoxide or unburnt uh, hydrocarbon atkinta parvagilla similarly nitric oxides uh, it will be converted into nitrogen gas that is what catalytic converters does in the vehicles rubber is an instrument which is used in industries which is meant for reducing the Uh, pollution where sulfur oxides are reduced you know sulfur oxides are bodu nitrous oxides are bodu both of them are known for causing acid rain so adana release aagu kadme aagidu so adrinda they are going to use scrubber i hope you know scrubber is something like this scrubber looks like this so there will be an inlet like this and there will be release of uh, 
polluted air which will be rich in sulfur oxides mel gade in the there will be spraying of uh, water or lime water so you know sulfur oxides lime water jothe react agi uh, gypsum agi convert agi aache hogutte so that till in the release agodu it will be till in the bartha irodu impure air athwa polluted air ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಆಚೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಏರ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಏರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಲ್ಫರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ನ್ಯಾಪ್ಟ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಕೆಟಲೆಟಿಕ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಸಸ್ಪೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲೇಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಬರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಾರಿ ಸಾರಿ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರೋಸ್ಟಾಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಪಿಟೇಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಸ್ಪೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲೇಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಕೆಟಲೆಟಿಕ್ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಅನ್ಬರ್ಂಟ್ ಹೈಡ್ರೋಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಮಾನಾಕ್ಸೈಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೈಟ್ರಸ್ ಆಕ್ಸೈಡ್ಸ್ scrubbers are meant only for sulfur oxides ella tarad pollution annu control madala next one montreal protocol is associated with control of emission of ozone depleting substance first statement in Uh, sir you are not audible sir i'm sorry am i not audible no no sir you were not audible that time and now i am able to hear anikesh yes sir yes sir now it's proper sir like like can can you let me know for what was the time period in which i was not audible was it uh, for a too sir, long it's like a few seconds ago that's all sir okay 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 fine uh yeah what i was asking was you may hear about two common agreements international agreements one is montreal protocol and the other one is kyoto agreement or kyoto protocol wherein uh, montreal is in place in canada in which uh, people from different countries agreed for reducing the uh, ozone depleting substance and it was done in uh, or the agreement or protocol was signed in the year 1987 and it came into effect in 1989 came into effect in 1989 and it is with respect to control of ozone depleting substance quite often abbreviated as ods it is correct statement but not correct answer methane and carbon dioxide are greenhouse gases yes definitely wherein we saw the maximum contribution for greenhouse gases of about 60% comes from carbon dioxide and 20% comes from methane uh, dapsons units are used to measure the oxygen content is wrong dapsons unit uh, that is du is unit which is measured or used to measure the thickness of ozone in uh, in troposphere so this is incorrect and hence the answer should be third one use of incinerators is crucial to disposal of hospital waste this is again correct statement see incineration or burning of solid waste is not, not recommended i'm repeating burning or incineration of solid waste is not recommended but why do we use in case of hospital waste is hospital waste has lot of pathogenic organisms in it otherwise for municipal solid waste the best thing to do is you reduce its waste or if it is there try to convert it into compost or try to convert it into vermi compost if you don't have that option at least go for land filling but the burning of waste is least recommended but it is recommended for uh, hospital waste because it is considered as bio hazardous material and bio hazardous material will be having many pathogenic organisms and hence it has to be burnt how many of the following are incorrect many of the following are incorrect uh, noise is a air pollutant if you can recall 
in the synopsis, what we were discussing was noise was included under air pollution as per the amendment of uh, Air Pollution Control Act. Air Pollution Control Act was uh, enacted in the year 1981. Air Pollution Control Act was enacted in 1981. But noise pollution was included under air pollution according to the amendment which was done to the same in the year 1987. This is correct statement. Question is about how many of them are incorrect. Motor vehicle equipped with catalytic converter should be used, should use uh, unleaded petrol, correct. We saw catalytic converter just now that it contains some of the metals such as platinum, rhodium, etc. And use of leaded petrol in that it is going to uh, bring down its efficiency. And then this, is state, this statement is also correct. CNG burns more efficiently unlike diesel and petrol. CNG stands for compressed natural gas. Compressed natural gas case study you have uh, studied when there was a public interest litigation that was filed in High Court of Delhi, uh, where Delhi, Delhi High Court reprimanded the government to reduce the pollution. Uh, and they saw that one of the reasons for pollution was the adulteration of the petroleum product. That is, petrol used to be get mixed with various kinds of uh, other liquids such as kerosene. So to reduce that adulteration as well as to increase the efficiency of uh, engines, government of Delhi introduced uh, compressed natural gas, which is better efficient compared to the petrol and diesel. That is correct statement. 0.1% impurities make the water unfit for human use, statistically correct. COD value, which is chemical or oxygen demand value is always it will be higher than the biological oxygen demand values that is also a correct statement agriculture induced algal bloom is in agriculture induces the algal bloom in the nearby water bodies of course the reason for this is that if there is an agriculture land somewhere over here and if a farmer uses too much of uh, fertilizers in this Umba fertilizers at Gobra Akadre. Those fertilizers, when it rains, it will be leached. That's why it will be carried into the it will be carried into the water bodies. And thereby the nutrients of the water bodies increases and leads to algal bloom. This is also correct. So the question is how many of the following is incorrect? So, none of them are incorrect. So, the answer should be first one. Next question. The use of dash is crucial in disposable of hospital waste. Just now, we saw it should be incineration. Is burning. So, since we had discussed just now, I'll go to the next question. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to identify what is A, what is B, C, and D. Uh, A is the point, you may remember this graph from uh, your textbook as well. A is the point where there will be sewage discharge. There is somewhere Manasa Gangotri over here where Ganga uh, takes birth. This is the origin of Ganga River. A Ganga River origin it will be having high dissolved oxygen but very low biological oxygen demand. But once if sewage is discharged, once if the sewage is discharged, which is shown by A, then suddenly uh, BOD is going to increase. There is sudden increase in the biological or biochemical oxygen demand. 
uh, as it grow, moves further, as you can see, BOD jastya gidu karme agide. It has reduced, and then again it has increased. Agadre B should be dissolved oxygen. So B should be dissolved oxygen because the concentration of dissolved oxygen has decreased. Sewage water release are the takshana. As soon as the sewage water is released, suddenly the BOD has increased. Which means C should be BOD and D should be the concentration of oxygen. So answer Ragadre, it should be B or 2. Next question and probably the last question. Uh, if time permits, let us take one or two more questions. Otherwise, we can discuss about any doubts if you have. Just now we saw this uh, scrubber. And we saw scrubber is meant for reducing the oxides of sulfur as and pollution. So we see the entry of the air. C represents the dirty air or you can call it as polluted air. Polluted air is entering through C. Um, what is A is clean air. A in the Ache Okta Rodu, clean air. Uh, B in the Andre Melgarde in the spray Akta Rodi in Untergre, lime water. Uh, B particulate matter in the Kotidere, which is going to settle down. But Ilache Boro the in Untergre, it is going to come out in the form of gypsum, which is going to settle down and comes out. So the answer for this question should be third one. Last question, and then we'll stop. Find out norms represented by A, B, C, and B. Uh, for four wheelers, according to Bharat stage three, Bharat stage three, uh, see, it is it has been implied is to since October 2010, it is implied throughout the country. Uh, B is Bharat stage four. B is Bharat stage four, which was implemented in 13 mega cities across India in the April 2010. Uh, <clears throat> C is Bharat stage three. Sorry, Bharat stage uh, two. Sorry, this is, uh, yeah, this is also Bharat stage three. This is also for Bharat stage three, but this is only for three wheelers, whereas this is for four wheelers. D is also Bharat stage three on also, whereas this is for two wheelers. So the answer for this question should be second one. have any doubts please let me know so that we can clarify our doubts and end up the session uh, sir i think there are no doubts because the uh, number of students has been reduced they've already left okay okay Okay, so then thank you so much, sir, for the session. Shall I log out then? Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Thank you. you can, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, students, uh, tomorrow you have uh, chemistry, first hour, and second hour as. Yeah, students. So first are uh, you have chemistry and second uh, second are uh, you have mathematics. So we'll uh, proceed with we'll have a next session tomorrow.